Alright, so today is an awesome day, and today is an awesome day because I finally get to replace something that has been bugging me for a long, long time. So a few months ago, I cracked this radio, and this is about the extent of it right here. That's all that it was. And when I took it to Subaru, and I had the pitch mount replaced, and they pulled the dash out and pulled the radio out, they actually cracked it much more. So there was about all this going on up here and down here and across here, and it looked so awful. And what I did was I attempted to swap screens with somebody because somebody had the same setup here and I thought I would save myself some money buying the whole unit and I would just replace the screen. But obviously you can see that is not possible when you pull on this screen, it just breaks apart into smaller pieces and there's no way that would have worked. So I love the unit so much, I actually got another one. Let me give you a little background here. So this is the, technically, what's in the car is the Subi Speed V1 head unit. And this is technically the Subi Speed V2 head unit. Now, this isn't the Subi Speed head unit. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce their name. I'm going to take a stab at it and say that it's Saikan. Um, they make these radios. And they were the ones producing them for Subi Speed. So when Subi Speed disconnect, or uh, sorry, what am I, not disconnected. When they got rid of them and discontinued them, this company still makes these and you can still buy these from their website. So this is an upgrade from my, from my V1 to the V2. Now the difference is that one was a quad core with four gigs of RAM. And I think this is an octa core with eight gigs of RAM. So, or 12 gigs, something like that. So it's going to be a lot smoother, a lot faster, and still retain the same beautiful look that it had before. This will be so nice because I've been dealing with the crack screen for forever now. So what I'm going to do as a bonus for this episode also is I'm going to be replacing, or sorry, fixing the airbag light. Now, I, I went on a forum and saw how people were doing this before. So, as you know, when you turn the key, there will be a passenger airbag on light right there. And what we're going to do, is, or on or off, what we're going to do is once this radio is out, I'm actually going to pull the, the hood out, and we are going to pull the screen off and put a black piece of vinyl over that. Now, I'll show you how to do that and how to make it look right, and uh, we'll go ahead and do that. That way, that's just one less thing that is annoying. You know, a big bright orange light right there in your face isn't always the best thing to look at while you're driving. So just pry this off with a flathead. Use the flathead to get these two out. Here's your connectors. We are going to have to pull these vents out. Pull out the hazard switch and the media switch there and then also pull out these AC and heater controls that's just four Phillips heads pop that off and these are just some clips that you're gonna have to pry with a flat head be careful not to break these because I already broke this and I had to weld this um, piece back together so don't do that okay so it was hard to film this so I couldn't but to pop this thing out you want to lift up and out what you want to do is, you don't even really need, what I did was I took a screwdriver and I pried up here just a little bit right on this felt tab and then I got my finger under it and then I slid the screwdriver over to this one and I took the screwdriver and my finger and popped up and out. Super simple. Now there's going to be these two screws back here you're going to have to take off. Once those two bolts are out, just give it a gentle tug and it'll pop out. That clips. And then you're going to have to take a flat head, same as with the radio clips, sorry, it's hard to get back in here. And you're going to have to pop those two clips out. That's going to be a little bit more difficult to get to, but you can see where they're at, pretty simple. Okay, once you get this out, there's going to be two bolts, two screws, sorry, two Phillips head screws holding it in on either side. You're going to want to pop those out, and that hood will be separated. Now would be a good time uh, to buy a JDM hood if you're planning on doing this. Um, one with like the red and black stitching. Don't mind, this place is a mess. So, toilet paper shooter. Who thought? 
Um, so now this should just be a matter of prying off this screen. Okay, simple enough. So once that's all done, um, this glass is all scratched up, the plastic. Uh, you're just going to take a flat head and basically pry all these off. Super simple, like the rest of this install. And now this is really clean, so you don't want to like fingerprint it up or anything. But what we're going to do is just get a piece of black, uh, flat black vinyl, and we're going to put it over this. So I'm going to go ahead and get the vinyl out, and we're going to cut, or we're going to lay it down, and we're going to cut it to shape. So I cut out a small piece here. I'm just going to apply it, and then trim it down. Okay, I kind of got the vinyl laid over it now. Now I'm just going to take... Okay, I kind of... <clears throat> Alright, so I kind of got this vinyl laid over here now. You can see the outline of where it needs cut. So now I'm just going to go ahead, take an X-Acto knife, and cut down those lines. Cut that out. The, um, the rest has been cut away. Now we can just make sure it's nice and clean. Go over it with the cloth. Put the glass back on, and you will never see that light again. I honestly can't believe how well that matches. Um, for the most part, it looks like it's supposed to be there. looks like the other side. But now we won't have that annoying light there anymore. It'll just be the displays. I could also, while I'm here, go ahead and get rid of the passenger blinking airbag light. But I always encourage my passengers to wear their seatbelt, and they always do. So that won't be an issue. Okay, so that piece is back in the car. Now, I did have to change out the plug. To... Oh! Okay, I did have to change out the plug to accommodate this new one. It was slightly different, uh, I guess being the V2. But, it's literally direct plug and play, so none of this stuff gets plugged in at all. The only thing that I need to worry about here is plugging in the antenna. Um, and wherever my GPS cord went. So the annoying airbag light is gone and now the radio is in.